So anyway, first thing I ask is, well, do you have children? Second thing I ask is, do you pay your child support? And how behind are you on your child support? Because all that matters to me. I don't hear nobody out there. Listen, so I was out last night partying with Mickey Howard. When I tell you she puts on a goddamn good, sweet, generous, dynamic, amazing, fabulous show, I mean it. I only had one beer and I still feel super duper high. Mickey Howard, thank you so much now on to this book's diva let's continue talking about keep the faith by faith evans big and i became truly inseparable after that night i was in brooklyn just about every day although it was hard to get him to come back to jersey to my place that man loved brooklyn like it was his wife and it was like pulling teeth to get him to leave, even for one damn night. A lot of street dudes be like that. They're not leaving their hood because they feel like they need to protect it. Protect it with what? Some of them dudes be in wheelchairs, be on drugs, too old to be doing any kind of work to protect their hood. And I'm like, what you gonna do when the hood is gentrified? Because my hood is totally gentrified now. And I love D.C. with all my heart. Every drop of blood in my body, I love D.C. I'm from D.C. Of course I got a pair of New Balance when I don't got no other shoes to wear. I'm from D.C. Of course my neighborhood has been gentrified and we still claiming it. <laughs> I'm from D.C. Of course I've been to jail a couple times. See, of course all the niggas is cool with me because I act like one of the men. D.C., of course I'm a pretty girl that can really fight. I'm from D.C., of course me and my daughter look alike. I'm from D.C., of course I got mumbo sauce in my house. I'm from D.C., of course I moved to Atlanta. D.C., of course nothing gets under my skin when a nigga yell at me or talk crazy to me because I like to talk crazy back. Duh. See, of course I'm your fave fave. Everybody loves, of course, one or two of my parents is either from the men South. Men who have lived and died for 640. You hear me? Died. Protecting. I know a man right now who's missing two fingers because he was in a knife fight because the dude said, fuck Morton Street. He was caught off guard in the jaw, so his face looks crooked. I was like, damn. So you got two fingers missing and he didn't got your jaw he was like baby that man got a lot worse that man loved brooklyn like it was his wife and it was like pulling teeth to get him to leave even for one damn night and if you're not a hood chick you're not going to understand that whenever you meet women that are not hood chicks and they want to marry them a hood nigga they always complaining stay off the block stay off the block girl he's smoking crack on the block Girl, he's shooting dice on the block. Girl, he just chilling with his homies on the block. Do you understand that that's a sense of release over there? Although they just came around the corner and shot that place up. And they don't be needing to hear them girls yap, yap, yap it in their ear about stay home, stay home. No. You're their stress. They come home to you after they've gotten their relief from hanging out on the block all day. Smoking crack. Weed. Dipper. Popping pills, shooting dice, and talking shit to the fellas all day. That's why they love the block. They love you hoes too, but they love that block. So I was joined at the hip, not only with Big, but with Chico, Nino, and C's too. If we went to the movies, they were sitting behind us. If we was doing the hoochie coochie in the back bedroom, they were out on the stoop. About two weeks after the Father's Day party, we went 
to a movie and somehow ended up alone for once. We came back to St. James and hung out in the car for a while. You know I'm going to marry you, he said, just like that. Yeah, whatever, I said. Big turned to face me. I'm serious. You have to be my wife. I wanted to say, do you even know what a wife is? It was strange to hear Big talking about grown stuff like marriage. He still lived with his mother and he was a baby in many ways. When he went on promotional trips for Bad Boy, he didn't even pack his own bag. And like many New Yorkers, Big didn't drive. No license and no cars. His life was about getting a new pair of Timberland boots, freestyling on mixtapes, playing CeeLo, and smoking weed. And he wanted a wife. Yeah, that sounds weird, but you know how them ninjas be. Once they get finished on the block, they want to go home to their lady. They need to have security on either side. These were heady, intoxicating times, and meeting big and falling in love with him so quickly just felt right. I hadn't yet met his mother. I'd had only minor interaction with his daughter. He hadn't met my family at all. Did I mention he was still living with his mother? And yet I had met the sweetest, most romantic guy and he wanted to marry me. Why the hell not? I'd met and hung out with all the people who were important to be, except two of the most important, his mother and the mother of his child. I had been parked on the corner of Fulton Street one afternoon with Big in the passenger seat as usual when I saw a woman in my rear view mirror walking towards my truck. I was bracing myself for something. I'd had my share of dealing with women over dudes, so I was ready for anything. I'm not sure why, but I assumed that it was Jan Jackson, the mother of Big's daughter. I had been wondering why they broke up, but could never get the full story out of Big. I don't know if she wanted to step to me or not, but Big got out the car and talked to her for a few minutes. And then she continued on her way, and he got back in the car. Was that your baby mother, I asked. Yeah, he said, that was her. And there was no more discussion about her. I had questions, but I didn't want to seem like I was intruding into his life. If he wanted to share stuff with me, I would listen. But I didn't want to pry. I have to admit, Jan and Big seemed like a good match. I don't know. I, I don't know what that means, Faith. Oh, wait. I know what it means. Pause. It's because they were both hood people. She seemed yeah. very low-key, just like Big. And she was an around-the-way girl, very comfortable in her Brooklyn hood, just like Big. See what I'm saying? Already knew how much he loved their daughter, Tiana. And I just trusted that he was handling his relationship with Jan and his daughter in the right way. Bullshit the baker. When I find out a dude got a baby, the first thing I say is, do you take care of your child? Because if you don't take care of your children, you can't be with me, nigga. I don't mess with nobody, no man who has a child on this earth and don't take care of his child or his children, okay? Because that is the most punkish shit to me. Next to putting your hands on a woman, having a child with a woman, nine times out of ten, they know that the baby mama ain't. And then they turn around and be like, my baby mother, the reason why I ain't with my daughter, bullshit the baker. You knew she wasn't when you laid down with her the same way these women knew that the nigga ain't shit when they lay down with the ninja, but they still created a baby any damn way. So anyway, first thing I ask is, well, do you have children? Second thing I ask is, do you pay your child support? And how behind are you on your child support? Because all that matters to me. Although I had seen Jan around and she may have known who I was, Big kept stalling on introducing me to his mother. In the meantime, I took him to meet my grandparents and other family members at a cookout we had for the 4th of July. My whole family was there, 
and I told my grandmother that I was going to marry Big. I could tell she was worried that we were moving too fast, and when she introduced Big to her mammy, her mammy was full of judgment. I'm like, lady, stop it. You ain't even raised your own goddamn daughter. You, 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 gave the, you gave the baby away to your cousin, Zzz, okay, who was raised in a house full of foster children and, and wayward children, okay, in, 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 in a hard knock life. Everyone was pretty cordial and accepting, and we had a great time, but it just made it more glaringly obvious that I had met Big's mother, and I stayed on him about it. He kept promising me it would happen when the time was right. In the meantime, I started planning our quickie wedding. She went to go pick out her ring. That's funny, I picked out my engagement ring too. It was called Diamond Quasar. It's $5,000, good price. I raised my eyebrow, wow. Well, I'm getting married. Congratulations. I want my husband to come pick this up. Can I just give you something to hold in until he can pick it up? Sure, he said, packing the ring and putting it behind the counter. He took out a pad to take down my information and I gave him $5, all the money I had on me at the time for him to hold on to it. $5 on a $5,000 ring? What the, what? Girl, what year is this? The jeweler offered me his hand. I shook it. My name is Jacob, he said. Pleasure to meet you. Big did end up buying that ring for me. And then he purchased some things for himself while he was dead. I thought he was broke, girl. What the hell? I mean, I know he on the block, but goddammit, I thought he was just selling weed. Hmm. Okay, we'll move forward. Did you purchase it? Because that's what be happening. You know women be buying their own rings. That's, that's, that's foreshadowing to me. That is disgraceful to me, how women be buying their own rings. Bruh. 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 That is crazy. And I bet you it's going to be some down in the comments going, I bought my own ring. And I, mm. That don't look good to me. I'm sorry. I don't want y'all to be like, nay, shut up. You probably got a buy, buy, buy ring. Uh-uh. I did not allow my wife to spend a rack of money on my ring. Trust me. What makes my ring uh, special is the setting. Get a ring that he can afford at the time. How about you do that? And then y'all upgrade together. I'm not buying my own ring. Y'all got me fucked up. It's bad enough that I buy my own car, clothes, pay my own bills. I got to buy my own ring too? Answer no. The jeweler offered me his hand. I shook it. My name is Jacob, he said. Pleasure to meet you. Big did end up buying that ring for me. And then he purchased some things for himself while he was there. Then he told Puffy about the spot. And word began to spread. Eventually... Everyone in the music industry would get their jewelry from Jacob the jeweler, all because I'd looked in the window and seen something I liked the day before Big and I got married. On the morning of August 4th, 1994, Big and I drove up to Rockland Country with his friend Man in the back seat. We talked and smoked weed for the entire hour long ride. You scared? I asked Big. Nah, he said. By the power vested in me by the state of New York, I now pronounce you husband and wife, said the county clerk. Big and I stood there and waited for the part where we were supposed to kiss each other. Now, since this is a civil ceremony and not a religious ceremony, there's no need to kiss the bride to make this official, the clerk said. Big kissed me anyway. I slipped the cheap $200 ring I'd bought for Big on his finger, and it was over. I was Mrs. Christopher Wallace. They say they love is blind, and I was so in love with Big that I couldn't see a thing. The next day, we went up to the bad boy offices to tell the staff about our little secret.